hello and welcome to the first episode of my new vlog where I'm going to be talking about uh, different topics related to my healing process in hopes that it might help others who've gone through similar things or going through similar things um, and I am sitting in my tiny tiny home on wheels um, it's also my mobile boutique where I sell international folk art um, vintage items, um, handmade treasures, whimsical nature, cat themes, um, things that really bring me a lot of joy and, um, and my hope is that I spread that joy um, from these items to others. And um, so I um, was thinking today about what I would talk about first. Um, for my first video or specific video on um, on my healing process and um, just to give you a little bit of background um, I'm a survivor of um, childhood sexual abuse and domestic violence um, I was also brainwashed in a very um, a radical religion um, where I wasn't um, really able to um, have my own mind, my own thoughts, or, or my own feelings. Um, they weren't encouraged or supported. Um, and so um, it's definitely been a long journey to get to where I am now. I started my recovery in 2008 um, after I got out of one of the worst uh, relationships of my life. Um, I had been kind of going along, um, you know, coping from my childhood for a long time. And, you know, we all develop coping strategies, um, especially when there's been um, very severe trauma. Uh, those coping mechanisms can also be um, very extreme. And so, um, you know, as a protection and as a way to just function in the world. And, you know, as a child, these coping mechanisms um, really serve us because they help us to, to survive a really unsurvivable um, situation, um, a situation where, uh, you know, in order to get our basic needs met, um, our primary needs, uh, we have to adapt and, and compromise ourselves and our sense of our sense of self and um, and um, you know in my case um, I you know put a lot of focus on um, trying to fix things um, to really show my family how much I love them uh, because I really wanted to receive that love in return um, I wanted to receive love that felt um, that was unconditional rather than a love that only met me um, in a conditional way um, and and so um, we develop these mechanisms to adapt um, and then over time these mechanisms be kind of come um, sort of a part of ourselves and the way that we think and the way that we um, go about our lives as adults and um, and then we find that most of the time uh, what was once a, a mechanism to um, protect us, to numb us, to, to allow us to just be kids in an environment um, where we are being, where it's unsafe or uh, where we are being hurt on a regular basis or um, or where our feelings, um, our emotions are being suppressed. Um, uh, we enter into the adult world um, with these mechanisms and we find that they create all kinds of conflicts and, and problems and limitations because we are no longer in the context of the abuse. Um, and so most of my recovery um, has been to um, sort of see where I'm looking through a lens colored by um, my the emotions of my past and where I'm sort of projecting um, 
these uh, beliefs and these uh, fears and these insecurities onto um, you know what's happening in the present moment um, and there is no judgment or no blame for this um, these mechanisms because they are they are essential for our survival when we've been through severe trauma but um, the work in recovery is really to be able to see where we're now being limited or um, held back and um, you know where our life is kind of kind of narrowed in um, gee, because we're so focused on just those primary um, those primary needs that we didn't get met and so we're you know kind of seeking you know I know for myself it was you know the major one was just um, was love you know I um, I didn't get the basic you know that basic need as a baby um, to be loved and to be um, not just loved but loved for all of who I was um, and to feel a sense of security a sense of safety and be able to attach to my um, to my parents in a way um, where I um, where I was secure and um, and where I knew that I was seen and visible and so I didn't have that and I um, I mean on top of the the abuse that was happening um, and so my focus or what was what I was consumed by as an adult in my the early years of my adult life in my teens and my early 20s was just getting that love and so that completely took over my mind and my you know my um, sort of my focus even though I had this um, amazing ballet career really young in New York City um, emotionally I just did not feel whole I did not feel um, I, I felt this emptiness that was constantly tugging at me and that was like an addiction that I um, needed to find I needed to seek out you know affection and, and love um, and um, it, it made it so it was really hard to to think about other things whereas other people you know, if they had that nurturing, they had that sense of security, they had that, that healthy attachment, you know, they felt a sense of, um, you know, if those needs were met. And so they could be thinking about, you know, other, you know, other things like their careers or, um, you know, romantic relationships, you know, moving into having families or, you know, just, um, you know, just more focus on their personal lives and, and developing um, their interests. And um, and so for me, it just it narrowed in um, what was happening in my life where I, you know, it was just that need, that need, that longing for um, that love. And, you know, eventually I, I got into relationships and then I, you know, there was this codependent dynamic that happened where, you know, um, I was getting, you know, some of my needs met, um, but I was also compromising and, and sacrificing other parts of myself in order to get those needs met um, because I did not, still, I couldn't really see myself, um, my, like, my, my, um, my authentic self, my, who I really was. Um, I saw myself still through the lens of the abuse and and my you know um, the self-esteem that I had then um, so it allowed for um, relationships that were um, you know maybe not physically abusive right away but were um, um, you know emotionally maybe manipulative or where the person was unavailable in some ways or um, where the dynamic was is that we weren't coming from a place where we were really, you know, whole in ourselves. And not that we have to be perfectly, you know, you know, everything has to be figured out and we have to be, you know, um, you know, perfect because there's no such thing as that, but in order to be in a relationship, but, um, but what was happening is just like, like I wasn't really, a f f you know, like I didn't really know myself. Um, I knew myself, a lot, you know, a lot through my identity through dance and through how my parents saw me and, um, and, uh, through my desires and my longings. Um, and so, um, 
I wasn't really able to be discerning as far as, you know, the kinds of relationships I got into, except that whatever it was that I really, you know, was drawn to, it was like I just, you know, needed that attention. I needed, and it was familiar to what I grew up in, um, in a way. So, um, um, I guess what I'm talking about today, because I wasn't sure um, of a specific topic is just sort of an overview of um, of sort of where I've been and um, and how I how I've gotten to where I am now and so um, right now I'm in a place where um, I've done a lot of work in reparenting um, the parts of myself, the kid parts of myself that were neglected, that were frozen in the trauma, um, that um, that weren't mirrored, that weren't really seen for for who this this girl was. Like she wasn't really seen, and so it was really hard to see myself as I became an adult, and and therefore. Um, it was hard to claim a sense of power, um, a sense of purpose, a sense of identity. And so um, as um, I did the work of connecting to the kid parts of myself, and I did it in different ways, um, I started um, after this really um, ab abusive, um, very psychotic um, relationship that I, that I got pulled into in 2007 um, and I, I had to um, um, escape from this person essentially um, in order to, to live and um, it really shocked me because uh, as I was saying earlier and I think I, um, um, I, I, I didn't finish or complete my thought um, was I had been going along in um, it, where I was really unhappy and I was really depressed a lot and I was but I was just um, you know my mode was to to people please to just do what um, people wanted me to do do what I thought the people wanted me to do and and I didn't really have the boundaries um, to protect myself from people who would just pull my energy and so there was a lot lots of people in my life who who pulled my energy it was you know family and work situations and friends and you know um uh romantic relationships you know where my energy just pulled 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 away from myself and i would um just give 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 um because that's what i knew in order to be validated in order to get approval in order to be loved um and you know obviously it wasn't all that was happening but that was like the major drive for me um, but it, I was so I was tra felt trapped a lot. I felt like I was trapped in this role that I had been conditioned to play as a child in order to feel safe, in order to survive. And um, you know how I was how was I going to get out of this? And this person came along and and handed me you know this um, this thing. It's like he gave me a sense of connection of purpose of um you're so amazing you know i want to spend my life with you you're this powerful woman you know people are taking advantage of you i want to protect you i want to you know be with you i want to have a family with you i want to help you you know um get into a whole new you know lifestyle that's more you and and so because at that point i was like so desperate you know so desperate to to, to to escape from myself, you know, escape from this 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 um, uh, this conditioning that um, that I you know that 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 was forced on me or pushed on me as a child, and also that was a mechanism to survive. And um, and so when this person came along, it was so intense. Um, those desires and those 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 long that longing um, that I just. Um, you know, I just dropped everything to be with this person, and I could tell that this person, um, there, there were definitely signs he was not okay, he was not a healthy person, he was very extremely, extremely wounded himself, um, but he could, you know, he was super intelligent, like a lot of people um, who have been extremely wounded um, tend to be also extremely gifted and extremely intelligent in a lot of ways as well uh, because you know these um, 
parts of ourselves can get really heightened um, and other parts don't develop.